Hello everyone, this is your instructor, Victor Campos. Welcome back to CIS 165. So we've started with week six, and that means now we're on chapter four of the book, which is Decisions and Loops. This is the chapter that will teach us about how computers think, make choices, and give results. Spoiler alert, they don't actually think. We need to program them to answer a series of basic questions for something to actually happen. So you should have read chapter four already before watching this video. All right, so here's the end result. Let me show you a preview of what we're gonna end up with, something like this. This is going to be a list of musicians in bands. So we've got Joey Ramone from Ramones, Shirley Manson from Garbage, Iggy Pop from The Stooges. Every time I refresh this site, this project, I get a new set of ages. These ages are within a certain range. So we'll see how to create a random age from a certain range. Okay, that's one thing. Then what we're going to do more impressively is we're going to jumble up everything. A last name will be mixed with a first name, will be mixed with an age, will be mixed with a band. So I'll say make a name. We're going to learn also how to make a button do something, although that'll be something we really get into on future chapters. I said make a name and I get Joey Cobain is 22 years old from Ramones. Iggy Pop is 18 years old from Ramones. Allison Cobain is 22 year old, years old from No Doubt. Courtney Manson is 17 years old from Hole and on and on. Allison Cobain, Gwen Love, Pete Ramone is 17 from Buzzcocks. Kurt Shelley is 24 from Nirvana, etc. So every time I press a button, I get a new jumble of a brand new band member. So this is going to be decisions and loops, the concept of this chapter. Let's get started then. I'm going to create a new folder. Week six. I'm going to uh, copy my index file basic template from before, paste it. Then I'll open visual code and set my folder to week six. I still have a previous folder open, so I'll go to file, close folder, and then file, open folder. So I'm opening my week six. And the index file. So I can call this chapter Chapter 4, I'll set this to H2 and write original band members with a div so I can see the results and ID div show original band then another H2 new band member I'm going to have a button here make a name this needs an ID so we can use it via JavaScript BTN make name and the result of clicking the button will be displayed in another div. So that can be empty, but it needs an ID. Div show new band. So in this first div, it'll show the list of the original band names unjumbled up. In the second div, it'll show the jumbled up names. There's a button to make it all happen. So that's it for the HTML in the JavaScript. I'm starting inside of my JavaScript here. I need to create a variety of arrays so that will hold all this info. You can make a comment, arrays of band info, so var last names equal to square brackets. This creates an array. I'll start off with three names so far. So last name Ramon. Cobain, 
Manson. Then a an array of first names. These can be in any order, but I just wanted to put last name, first name. So then that's Joey Ramone, Kurt Cobain, and Shirley Manson, or Marilyn if you want. An array of band names. So these are all strings in quotes. Joy Ramone is from the group Ramones. Kurt Cobain is from the group Nirvana. And Shirley Manson is from the group Garbage. I need to know how many number of musicians I have saved. So I'll create a variable called last names length. So, we, so I can keep track of how many uh, band members I've created. So far it's three and I can get that via last names dot length. So I'm storing the length in a variable. Next, a variable of ages, which will be an empty array at the moment. This is going to be dynamically generated a little bit later. I want a random number of ages for each of the musicians in the array. So I can start the array as empty. We'll be learning then to add something to an array after the fact. The way I'm going to create these various ages is first of all to use a for loop. For loop or conditional statement to generate random ages in a range. So we've looked at random numbers before, but now we're going to do this uh, within a range. So I'll start my syntax of four, open close, curly braces. I like to make a note here, especially if it's a long for loop or other such thing. End of for loop for generating ages. So as you read in the chapter, for loop has a starting point and an ending point and an incrementer. So var i equal to zero, start from the first item. The syntax here is very unique. There's a semicolon right in the middle of the statement, which you don't really find that often except for like a for loop. I is less than last name length. Semicolon I plus plus. So start from the zeroth item of the array and keep going until we run out of names in the array, the length. And every time you do one operation, one loop, increment the i value. So what we're doing several times, in this case three times, because there are three names in the array, is we're creating a variable, calling it random ages temp. That's set equal to math dot random times. Okay, so I want to have a range um, between 13 and 25 years old, for example. So you might think, okay, then I'd put 25. Well, that would give me up to 25, but it would include one. So a one-year-old person, a seven-year-old person? No, we have to do it this way. We're going to say, first of all, 12, and then plus 13. So it can be as little as 12 or as much as 12 plus 13, which is 25. However, again, we can get random, we can get fractions and such, so we'll have to round this. So I actually have to uh, use the math.round. This time I will use math.round instead of floor or ceiling because I do want either the higher or lower number. The lowest number would be 12. I'll wrap another parenthesis around that whole statement. So from the inside, generate a random number up to 12, round it up or down, then add 13. 
So the minimum could be 0 plus 13 to give me a 13-year-old. The maximum could be 12, which would be 12 plus 13 would be 25. So this will create a number between 13 and 25. So once I've got that number, that age, into my ages array, I'll use dot push method to add an item back into this empty array. I didn't define the array with anything inside of it, so I have to push a value into it. And that value is random ages temp. So again, between 13 and 25 years old, that'll be added to the array. And it'll be in that sequence. And it'll happen three times because we start with the zeroth instance and we go up to the length, which in this case would be three. So we'll develop three ages and push them into the array. You can see this by doing some console output saying, give me the ages. So I'll save that. I'll open up the HTML file in Chrome and see the developer's console. So my array so far is three ages, and in this case they happen to be 15, 17, 19. When I refresh, it develops a whole new set, 24, 20, 22, 17, 20, 14. So imagine then 20 is linked with Joy Ramon. 18 is linked with Kurt Cobain, and 23 is linked with Shirley Manson, simply because they're in that order, 0, 1, 2. Another refresh, 24, 14, 41. Another refresh, 24, 14, 24. Okay, so next I need to combine all of these separate pieces of data, last name, first name, band name, and age, into one object. So based on the previous chapter, we will create, using object constructor notation, a person object. Those are going to be stored in another array. Original band person. Empty array. We don't have those names constructed yet. Another one, this will be random band person. We're going to randomize their names so we can get Kurt Ramon or Shirley Cobain and the ages and the bands and so forth. So both of those arrays are currently empty. They will be filled with the objects. I want to display those original and random names on screen, so I'm going to uh, create objects that reference the divs that are empty up here. var l show original band l div show original band equal to document dot get element by id quotes div show original band var l div show new band and that's also document dot get element by id quotes div show new band so now we'll be able to reference those divs in the HTML block and change them with inner HTML. Lastly, I want to create another variable, but this one will reference that button. Now this is something that'll be much more useful in a couple of chapters, but I'm introducing here uh, the ability to press a button to do something. We also need to make an element, this time of our button, elbtn make name. That's also based on document.getElementById, and it's the btn make name. So I'll get back to this, but this is now making a JavaScript object so that we can reference the button, so we click on the button to do something, although it takes three steps. That's why there's a whole chapter about it later, chapter six. I'm going to introduce a little bit of it at the moment, however. You can note, create an object of the button on screen. 
you can say here create objects of the divs on screen all right so in order for us to combine last name first name band and age we will create an object for that band member function band member parentheses curly braces so here I've got the capital letter to signify it's an object using constructor notation so band member will represent the collection of data of last name, first name, band, and age. So therefore, it will accept the parameters of last name, first name. Now, this is uh, suggesting first names or last names. You can use that same name with the plural, with the S. But last names, plural, is the array with a collection of many last names. First names is an array listing a lot of first names. In contrast, last name is one last name that we're using to create this band member, and first name is one first name that we're using to create this band member. We're using an age. Ages, again, is the array with a collection of many ages, and age is the one age I'm using to create one band member. And lastly, band. We have band names. We could call this band name. And lastly, band name. It's going to be one band name instead of all band names. Now, you may notice that at the top, I created these in the order last name, first name, band name, age. And here I'm using them as last name, first name, age, band name. That really doesn't matter at all, but I can keep it the exact same order. That's fine, as long as I supply all four of those arguments once I create the band member object. I just have to remember the order of these. As we've seen before, then we have to set that this last name is equal to the last name that was supplied. And this first name is equal to the first name supplied. And the same for the band name, band name, and the age. So we've seen this before. This is an example where I personally like to line these up. This is completely optional, but I think that looks nice and organized. I just pressed tab to uh, align these up. Without tabbing, it would work just fine. But with these tabs, I think it looks a little nicer. This is completely optional. Next, I'll also create a method called info. And this is going to be a method, so it's a function here, where it will return to me all of those separate items as one. Last name, first name, band name, age, as one phrase. So I'll create a variable here called full band member info. Now again, you can call these whatever you want. And I see all the time on so many tutorials that eventually at a certain point they call this something like FBMI. Fine, but if you don't remember what that stands for, that's going to be very annoying. And I know I've looked at other people's code where I'm wondering, why did they call this thing simply I or you? Like, what does that even mean? And I know that when it's very verbose like this, it's a lot to write. But with a code editor like Visual Code, it fills it in for you. So I really don't like the really short variable names and function names and all of that. I think that it's completely unreadable. You won't be docked points if you use really short names. Don't worry. But hopefully I understand your code and it works. And that is what you will be graded on, that your code works. So full band name is going to be a string. I'm going to say this first name plus space quotes space this last name. 
So I'm combining first name and last name with a space in between. Plus, quotes, space is space. I'm going to say first name, last name is X years old. So the X comes here, this age. Space plus, quote, space, years old from the band X. Continuing the string plus this band, space plus quotes, dot semicolon. It's a really long line, so let me break it down. Readability a little bit like this. Uh, I'll put it right after this plus. So, Joey space Ramon is 25 years old from Ramones. Kurt space Cobain is 20 four years old from Nirvana. That's the result of this info method. Then I'll return that full band info. So whenever we use the info method of a band member, it will return this phrase. All right, so in order for us to create these three band members, we're going to use another for loop. The one on top created ages for the total number of band members we have. We need another loop to do something several times. To create a complete band member and store it in the array of original band person. So you might lose track of some of these curly braces. It's a good idea to write a note and band member object. So it's the end of my band member function, my object. So our for loop here, syntax as we've seen before, var i starting at zero, going until i has reached last name's length, i++. plus plus. So again, we're going to start from the zero with band name and go up to the maximum length, which in this case is 3, and then increment by 1. And for loop of creating a band member object and storing it in the array. In this loop, we create a variable original band person TMP is equal to a new space instance of band member object. Similar to when we used new date, we had the special date object and we created a new instance of that object. Well, we invented band member object, and we're creating a new instance of it. Band member object assumes a last name, first name, band name, and age in that order. Well, we have an array of last names. I want to grab the first last name, which would be Ramon. We can use i, which is currently set to zero, because the zeroth item of the array would be Ramon. Well, I don't want to put that hard-coded value. I want the dynamic value of i. i is currently set to zero. So we're creating a band member of last name i, comma, first names i band names i and ages 
i. So again, our object assumes each of these in this order. I have an array full of possibilities. We're just getting the i value of each of these. So all of these say i, which i is currently set to 0. So the 0 with last name, the 0 with first name, the 0 with band name, and the 0 with age. Next, we've got the array that we defined earlier, which is empty, original band person dot push. So previously we used push when we invented a random age and we pushed it into the array of ages, that random age. So then we populated the ages array. Next we're doing the same thing. In the original band person array, up here our array is empty, we're populating it, we're pushing into it a brand new original band person temp. And then we're going to display it on screen. L div show original band dot inner HTML. We're going to create a paragraph plus original band person I dot info method plus quotes, ending of the p, tag, semicolon. So we've looped three times, created three band people, the original names in the original order, pushed each of those into the array, and then on screen in the div show original band, we've written some HTML, a paragraph plus the zero width or the first band person in that array called the info method. Info is up here. Info is the sentence. First name, last name is age, years old from band. That will be displayed on screen. So I'll save it. I'll refresh my browser. In my case, I probably misspelled something. I got an error. Let's check that out. Line 47. Oh, here it is. Function. That's not how you spell function. You might have caught that early on and, and, and was yelling at me. Uh, you misspelled it. You misspelled it. And I should have noticed it because it was the wrong color. Anyway, uh, I could say I did that on purpose. So that's been fixed. Refresh the code again. No error. Okay, so Shirley Manson is 14 years old from undefined. When JavaScript fails, the rest of the code stops being processed. So I didn't see all three band members. I only see one. And something is happening on undefined here, which is the band. I am seeing the first name, the last name, the age, and then the band isn't working. So I'm expecting from undefined. Here it is here, from undefined. And I wrote this band. Whoops, I called the property this band name. So that should have been this band name. And I'll check that again. So the result is no more undefined. Shirley Manson is 13 years old from garbage. Now every time I refresh this, it gives me a new age between 13 and 25. Perfect. And so it linked together Shirley and Manson and garbage with a different age. Now, I said that we were going to uh, do this up to three times because our, our last name's length is the total number of names in the array, which is three. But it only did it one time. That's because it's time to introduce a new item to our coding repertoire. Line 63 in my case, I've got in the div dot inner HTML equal to the original band person. Well, we've used inner HTML before and we said equals. So basically you can think about it as take the thing on the right 
and put it into the thing on the left when there's an equals. It's an assignment operator. We're assigning what's on the right to what's on the left. Okay, well that worked for us before, but now we need to be a little bit more clever because I want to show the three different names. So this assignment operator basically takes whatever is originally in the object on the left and empties it out and replaces it with whatever we're saying on the right. So an equal is saying show the first band person, but then we loop, then empty that and show the second band person, then we loop, then empty it, show the third band person, the loop is over, so the third band person is Shirley Manson. We want to add all three band members to be displayed. So we say plus equals. No space there. Make sure you've got plus equals as one code. So here we're saying now to whatever is already there, add something new. Loop, then add something new. And now the result is that the three band members are visible. The first go round in the loop, the second go round, and the third go round in the loop. And I still get random ages for everyone between 13 and 25, and all three band members are shown. I'm going to add a, a new band member. I'm going to add last name Love, first name Courtney from the band Whole. And then automatically the algorithm kicks in. I don't have to manually add them to the array like we did in a previous exercise. We have a loop, a for loop, a conditional statement that will automatically push or add an item to the array x number of times, in this case now four, because I've got four names in the last name. All of the arrays have four items, so I only need to check one of them, last name. So I've got a loop of four times that creates an age and adds it to the array. Then I've got a loop that goes four times that creates a band member object and adds it to the array holding the original band member. And then that is displayed on screen automatically. So now this is much smarter than before. I'm just adding names here and the algorithm automatically loops and does its thing. So just for fun, let's say I add myself. So last name, first name, uh, my band, the Vic Tones. I simply add one more item. Now my length here is one, two, three, four, five. So this loop will loop five times, and this loop will loop five times. Once I refresh, I have five names in that original order, random ages every time. Next, it's time to make this button work when I click it to mix up everyone's names and ages and bands. So I want several things to happen upon that button click. We have created this L button make name as our trigger to make it happen. So next line. L button make name dot add event listener. This is brand new and we're not going to get to it for a couple of chapters. So making the note event listener to make the button work. There's a whole chapter on it that goes into detail about what that means. We're getting to that a little later, but with this basic code here, we can make the button do something. So we're waiting for the event. There's a button on screen. We're waiting for an event. The event that we're waiting for is a click. There's a click, a double click, a right click, etc. 
So on the, on the event that there's a click, do something. And the something is going to be comma fn. This is a function that we're making up. Generate names comma false. For the moment, this is the syntax. Just write it as is. It'll make more sense once we get to that chapter. But we're saying there's an object on screen waiting for an event. The event is click. Once the object has been clicked, run the function generate names. And false is about bubbling and all of that. Don't worry about it just yet. It's good practice to make this event listener one of the last things in your code. And this will probably work fine if you do it backwards. But I'm going to say backing up. This is where I'm going to define function what fn generate names means. So note I have event listener as my last bit of code before my JavaScript ends. Before that I have the definition of what generate of what generate names is. So I define what that is, then I use it once I click. What do I click? The object I created up here which is based on the button way up there. To see if this is on the right track, I will simply do a little bit of console output. I simply want to see if it proves clicked. I clicked on the button, and in the console, I should see some output. Refreshing that, clicking the button, I get the message, clicked. So now this button has become a trigger when I click it, the event of click happened, and therefore I clicked it five times, and it says I clicked five times. So now we have the capability to click a button to do something. And again, it's a little slightly premature to talk about this very deeply. You'll have to wait until chapter six to really get into it. We're still dealing with loops. But what I want to do is click on the button and then generate some brand new names. Making a note here, this is and fn generate names. I don't need that console output anymore. I want to make a copy of the arrays that currently exist because I'm going to get a random first name and combine it with a random last name. And upon this copy of the array, I'm going to remove the name. So I only want to use the name Joey one time. I only want to use the name Courtney one time, the last name Cobain one time. So I'm going to make a copy of the original arrays so that then I can remove the names as I make new names. Creating some variables here. So temp last names. I want to make a copy of that array of last names. This is a temporary copy. So I have to say from the last names dot slice zero. Starting from the zero with name in the last names array, let's slice that and make a copy. In short, this is the syntax to make a copy of an array. Makes a copy of an array. That's the short answer. So I need to make a copy of the other arrays. Var temp first names. That's going to be from first names dot slice. Zero with position. Guess what's next? Var temp band names. And that's from band names slice then var temp ages that's from ages slice and I also need a length var temp last names length is equal to temp last names dot length the length of the temporary array of last names. Every time I click the button, I want to display a new mixed up name on screen. I have the placeholder div show new band. 
So every time I click the button, I want to clear this array out and show a new set of jumbled names. So I have to say L div show new band dot inner HTML equal to quote end quote with nothing in the middle. So this is going to clean out that array. It's going to cancel what's already there. I also need to clean out my array holding the jumbled up names. So way at the top here, we created random band person. I need to clean that out every time I press the button to store new names. So that will be set to equals empty array. And the magic will happen in this for loop. So again, another decision loop. And for loop of generating random names. Again, I'm starting from i is equal to 0, the first item of the array. i is less than our temp last name length, i++ plus plus to increment. So in this case, at the moment, it'll be from 0 to 5. I want to randomly pick a last name, a random first name, a random age, and a random band. So variables in here var random last name num is equal to math dot floor math dot random times temp last names length. All right, so what's happening here is I'm going to pick a random position, a number, a random position of a last name. That is based on the total number of last names in my array, the length. So from 0, because we're rounding down, from 0 to 5, give me a random number. I've got five possible last names. This will give me a number two, so it's the third name. It'll give me a zero, so it's the first name. And I need to do that for the last name, the first name, the band name, and the age. Var random first name num is equal to the exact same thing here. I'm just going to copy and paste this. And instead of temp last name, I have temp first names. Next, I've got a variable of random band names. And that's the same thing, math.floor.random. This time it's temp band names. And lastly, var random ages is equal to the same thing, but temp ages length. So all of this is basically to choose a random last name, first name, band name, and age. Then we can create a random band person temp. That's a new band member. So this is very similar to what we did up here. Original band person temp, creating a new band member with their own last name, first name, band, and age from the original names. Now we're going to create a random one. So we've got this random number to work with. We're still using the same arrays, last name, first name, band name. So one way to save some effort here is if you copy all of those arguments, last name, first name, band name, ages, paste it in here. But we're not going to deal with i. We're going to deal with the random last name number. We're not dealing with i under the first name. We're dealing with random 
first name number random band name number and random ages So now we've created a band member from a random number, save that as this object. Time to start putting it in the array. So if we chose a name, first name and last name and such, I don't want those as options anymore. I want to remove them from the array. That's why we created these temporary arrays. So we can say temp last names dot splice. Now this is splice, not slice. We used slice to make a copy of an array. Splice to remove an item from an array. So slice makes a copy of an array. Splice removes an item from the array. And the way this works is, well, which particular random last name are we talking about, comma, one? basically only remove one item starting from the random last name that I've chosen. We do the same thing for the temp first name, splice. Well, it's the random first name, number, comma, one, only remove one item. Then we've got temp band names dot splice remove random band names, one item, and temp ages.splice, remove random ages, one. So now I cannot use the same name again as I loop. I'll add that new random band person to the array now over here, I, I just noticed myself, I did put a capital A here. If I continue to use a capital A in the future, it's not a misspelling. If you have autocomplete, it'll automatically put a capital A. I meant to put a lowercase a there. But because of autocomplete, it would have filled it in for me. I probably wouldn't have noticed it, and it would have worked fine. As long as you spell it all the same way, it works fine. So here to my array, random band person. That's the array that we created up here that is empty, random band person. I'm saying to the random band person, push. We're adding to the array this random band person temp. And lastly, display it on screen. We have the L div show new band dot inner html plus equals because we're adding a new line of paragraphs random band person i dot info method plus the ending of the p tag so very similar to what we did above with the unchanged names show the original band person i which would have started with zero their info which was that phrase in a paragraph on screen here the difference is to the mixed up new band names uh, set in our html plus equals to a new paragraph of the random person they have they inherit the info method and in this case, again, we go from I to five, zero to five. Let's see the result. All right, so it looks like I got some random names, but it's not quite working right. I noticed something in my code here, unfortunately. So this kind of error here, unfortunately, is a logic error and not a syntax error. If there was some error in my code, I would see it pop up here. Nothing's popping up. This is a logic error. This is one of the hardest ones to figure out. Because every time I run this, it's supposed to have a random name, random ages, and so forth. 
And at a certain point, this doesn't look random anymore. So it's kind of hard to troubleshoot this, but what you would have to do is go back and follow each of these names. And it's very useful to double click for it to highlight, to kind of follow it along. And I figured out my problem. It's based on this temporary array. I accidentally used the original arrays here when creating the band member, not the temporary. That was the whole point of it. So my mistake, I should not have copied back on line 61, the last name and first name to create an original band member. I should have written it longhand because it caused this problem. I no longer want to work with the original versions of the last name and first name and such. I want to work with the copies, the temp last name copies. So all of these on line 83 where I created the new band member of a random band member, all of these needed to be the TMP versions. And the new spelling is TMP capital last names, TMP capital first names, TMP band names, and TMP ages. So I need to work with the copies of these arrays. Now when I highlight it, it highlights up here that I've made a copy via slice and I'm using the length here and then I'm using splice here. So I need to deal with the temporary versions of all of these arrays that I created. My carelessness in wanting to copy and paste from above caused this issue. So now when I save it and run it and click the button, I get random names every time. Courtney Ramon is 15 from the Victones. Victor Cobain is 17 from Nirvana. Notice none of the names repeat. A moment ago, some of the names were repeating. Now none of them repeat. Only one name appears with one thing. Kurt Cobain is 14 with Ramones, and that was just randomly. But over here, we would have Kurt Ramon is 15 from Ramones. So I should not have the same first name used more than once. I don't see that. Shirley, Kurt, Joey, Courtney, Victor. The last name should only be used once. Cobain, Campos, Love, Manson, Ramon. Same for the age. Well, the age can actually be the same since it is a random number, so that one's okay. But then the band cannot be the same. If you are getting duplicates of the first name or the last name or the band, something's not quite right. And that was probably my mistake. Sorry about that. You want to have the temp versions of the array, not the original array. And the result is then an exercise in conditional statements. I get a random age for an original band member every time I load the project. As I add a new band member, it automatically gets added on screen via the algorithm. And then when I click to make a random name, it combines first name, last name, age, and band differently every time. So based on this lecture, you will create your own version. Check our class online to see the details. And this is what you're going to create. So this is Victor Campos. See you next time.